Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to a very special interview that we are going to have with a very, very special guest. My name is Dr. Abdullah Muhammad Nawi, and I am the president of the APRA. Malaysia chapter of the APRA is the Association for Professional Researchers and Academicians, and also attached to University of Technology Malaysia. And with me is a very special guest, uh, Professor Oskan Saritas. Uh, all the way from Moscow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for joining us, Professor Oskan. Um, I, I can only imagine what travel uh, must be like now with everything going on. How long did it take you to travel to Malaysia from Moscow? That mm. must have been quite a, a long distance there. Yes. Uh, currently, it, it took me about 24 hours. 24 to hours. Be here. Uh, it used to be shorter, of course, right. yeah. uh, because of the ongoing political situation. Right. Uh, we have to deviate to some uh, zones of conflict. Right. So that is why it takes about uh, two times longer than oh, it used okay. to be uh, to, to get to our destination. So, zones of conflict. I think we're going to have some very interesting conversation about that. I have a couple sure. of few questions. Yes. Now, for, for the folks watching, um, a little bit about Professor Oskar. So Professor Oskar is the head of the laboratory for science and technology studies at and a national research university higher school of economics yeah and that's in, in moscow yeah he, and um he's also but a honorary mm -hmm. professor at the manchester institute of innovation research at the university of manchester mm -hmm. and also the editor the chief of foresight journal and that's the journal of Future studies, strategic thinking, and policy, and that to me is it's going to be fascinating, because when you talk about having foresight, it sounds like you're clairvoyant and you can see the future. <laughs> so we're going to be talking a little bit about that after this. Sure. Now, um, first question that, that, that I would like to, to ask you is: uh, You've been with uh, Connecting Asia. Uh, the conferences for this is your third conference with us with, first, so you you're very familiar with us uh, by now uh, could you tell us a little bit from an outsider's point of view um what you think of connecting asia so far and the work that we've done here so far mm -hmm. well i'm both familiar with connecting asia yeah. and at the same time not so ah, no. <laughs> this is my third conference and the two previous ones were uh, online. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, because of the pandemic. And this is my first offline or physical presence right. in the conference. <laughs> so, in some ways, it's my first. It's your, it's your first time. Time. Right. To meet you and other brand yes. people around it. It's strange because we're very familiar with each other because we yes. met each other online quite a few times. <laughs> but this is the first time we've worked with each other face to face. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and th that's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm really happy to be here. I uh, really like pleased to meet you and all the conference delegates in in person. All right. So I already knew I mean that this is an impressive uh, kind of an effort, mm. and it's the eighth conference this year, and then it is actually going forward. And then I see that there's a great uh, it's a project actually to me more because it, it's mobilized a lot of people. Uh -huh. Uh, there's a lot of like dedication for this process. Everybody's working on a voluntary basis mm. and they are very productive. So we just heard that actually they produced 6,000 6, articles. 6,000 6, is this possible, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> this is not real. real. I mean, so this, this, is a, this is a real success. Right. And uh, I was just exposed to this uh, effort very recently. Mm. Well, it, it's already like three years, but I'm still new to that. But uh, I started seeing some uh, impacts of it already because Great. we have, for example, uh, uh, edited a special issue mm -hmm. about the business disruptions after COVID-19. Right. And then, uh, uh, which was uh, edited by a uh, doctor, uh, Imran Kureshi. Right. So uh, he's a really great person and one of the key initiators of uh, Connecting Asia. Right. And um, so then, so with him, uh, we created this uh, special issue. It's, it was a double special issue, even mm -hmm. larger than normal size. Right. And there were even much more papers which were waiting in the line, and they had to be directed into regular issues. Wow. Was wow. was okay. actually feeling quite, you know, impressive, mm -hmm. and very good materials. Just shortly after its launch, in right. a few months' time, mm -hmm. 
this special issue was downloaded in very high numbers. Mm -hmm. It actually three times, I mean, was more than the previous, the newest special wow. issue. Oh, that's it's amazing. been over wow. 23 years. Mm -hmm. So, 22 years. Yeah. Yes, you can't look and I can't imagine. I mean, um, I love, of course, the, this, the efforts by uh, Dr. Krejci yeah. was very impressive. And then uh, I saw this, I saw the great impact. And now uh, we have appointed him as our new uh, regional that's, editor. That's awesome. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, because I believe that he will make more contributions to us, to the community. Right. And I'm very pleased to be like a, an editor of one of those outlets, scientific mm -hmm. outlets, which can connect Asian research to the global scientific right. world. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm a part of this process. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you, you talk about Foresight Magazine and, yeah. um, uh, and I'm also very, very happy to be part of it because of my student and I and another colleague, we had an article which was just recently published in there, which was submitted last year. So we took a whole year to go in. So that's, it happens. That's it's normal. It's true. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a normal thing. Yes. And also what's even more impressive is that Foresight, as you say, has been around for 23 years, mm -hmm. but it's also mm -hmm. indexed in both ISI mm -hmm. and Scopus as well. How, how is that done? Yes. Well, that's, that doesn't happen you know, in a day or so, no, no, for you really need to spend the years to build the journal and then uh, to get some, you know, quality submissions and then to have an audience which is uh, very dedicated to the journal, both in terms of publishing, but not only in terms of publishing. So we are grateful for our reviewers too, mm. because they put their time on a voluntary basis and then it's not an easy task. And they are very instrumental for us to publish good research. Right. Yeah. And as the research gets better, of course, the, this is the more cited. It has more impact right. on the policy and strategy. So therefore, uh, this is recognized with the impact factors. Right. Yes. So source-side journals uh, impact factor is growing. In the last uh, five years, it's actually triple. Triple. So, oh, yes. What's what's the impact factor? Uh, the uh, site score was uh, 1.3. 1.3. Uh, that was uh, five years ago. Mm. And today it's 3.8. Oh, 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 so oh, oh. 3.9. So 3.3 to 3.9. Yes. That's so we are making the uh, progress, and the, the, the it's uh, indexed in Scopus and also Web of Science right. Emerging Source Citation Index. Right. So. Um, I think this special issue uh, that uh, Dr. Krishi has uh, edited and he's now suggested actually another special issue, which is in progress. And mm -hmm. these are helping us, for example, to uh, and broaden our audience. Right. I'm really actually grateful to him that he's introduced me personally and also the journal to this community where right. there are a lot of great minds, bright people, and they are very productive. Right. I'm really impressed with that. And this is my first opportunity to meet this community in person that's, that's and awesome. yourself <laughs> also, <laughs> as one of the contributors of the channel. So, uh, so it, it, it's great to be here and I hope our uh, uh, collaboration will continue in the years to come. Definitely, definitely. Now, um, um, the term foresight, so foresight magazine, the term foresight actually comes from, the, it's, the, there's a research term, isn't it? Yes. Where you talk about this, about, about it's essentially seeing what's going to happen in the future. But then again, classify yourself as a futurist. And, and is there a difference between a futurist and a foresight practitioner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, the field of foresight has been growing. I mean, it has been there. Foresight uh, is an unavoidable human characteristic. Mm -hmm. So each of us uh, has this capacity. We always think about like uh, our next steps. So we have all like our purpose for life, for example, and we know that we have limited time and limited resources. So we have to be strategic mm -hmm. when we make our decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So if so many people are, for example, coming together here today, that means they really prioritize this event, this get together and found it as the most useful thing to do at this point of time instead of going somewhere else and doing something else. Mm. 
So, uh, and this is how we are making use of our time and we see the clear benefit of that. And we are all happy that we are here. And this is the strategic choice. Right. It's a priority. So we always set our priorities in our lives. And um, so foresight is actually becoming more institutional activity. So this was like a more individual foresight. Right. And now we are putting our heads together and bringing our power of anticipation right. together to make it like a more institutional activity. Right. So then we collectively look into the future and design the future, trying to understand its dynamics and use all kind of uh, evidence and combine it with our creativity to develop our visions. Right. And then to formulate policies and actions. So foresight is actually a research field in doing this. So we use a lot of like uh, in qualitative and quantitative methods. We do the scanning of trends, horizon scanning of trends in society, technology, economy, environment, politics, cultures, and etc. We plan future scenarios. We formulate visions. We set priorities, develop strategic plans, roadmaps, right. and then action plans. So this is uh, what the uh, foresight research is about. Right. So it has a bit of a maybe a thin line with the futurism. Right. Because there's also a field of, you know, uh, futurism. Yeah. It has been there widely recognized. And, and it goes like a, into the territory of research when you formulate this foresight, mm. where uh, we go from like a um, prediction of the future or speculation of the future into more evidence-based mm. research. Right. So foresight makes use of uh, evidence. Sometimes this evidence comes from expertise right. or from stakeholders. Sometimes it comes from literature. Sometimes it comes from data. Right. We are actually making more use of data and data analytics. Right. And so it's been established as a research field. So we don't only like uh, and talk about the future, throw some ideas, and leave the future there. Right. So you shape the future. Exactly. That's, that's the whole and we point. know that actually we shouldn't leave the future in the future. Yeah. We should bring it to the present. The present. That's right. Yeah. Because actually the future is not too far. No. It may sound like it's a long time, 10 years, 20 years. But when you look at how research is performed, how it is uh, established, how you build your skills, and how you translate research into technology, yeah. technology into new products and services, and those products and services into markets for future youth, for the benefit of society, for the mm -hmm. benefit of the economy. This is a lengthy process. Yeah. And you really need to plan it from now. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow may be late. Yeah. So we put the evidence of that. We draw strategic roadmaps and plan all this process. Right. So um, bringing, bringing mm -hmm this whole discipline of the future to the now means bringing researchers in. So what would your advice be to researchers who would want to contribute to Foresight Journal? What's, what sort of, uh, what sort of, what's the angle, what's the focus that would give them a better chance to be published in Foresight Journal? Sure. I mean, it a researcher is a person and which actually, um, because the research task is kind of future oriented activities and the researcher is a naturally born foresighter. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, you have some uh, anticipation, you detect some need, right? And you formulate a research question based on these needs right. or, or totally based on your feelings. It may be sometimes curiosity driven, mm -hmm. sometimes need driven, but you see a reason, you see the potential, and then you plan it and you anticipate the results. Mm -hmm. And then you start doing this right. because the research without vision is not possible. Basically, you start the process. So therefore, uh, for me, and uh, all research activity has some implications for the future. Mm -hmm. It will develop society, economy, policy making, strategy making, and eventually it will improve our state mm -hmm. of development mm -hmm. from the existing point to hopefully a better future point. So um, 
researchers are more than welcome, of course, to publish the results of their research in any field. Right. Because our life is actually a combination of many different research areas. Right. Right? When you have, for example, a 24 hours of our life, so think about it, for example, uh, we eat, and there's a hu huge uh, food chain mm -hmm. behind it, mm -hmm. from field to table. So I imagine yeah. the whole chain. And when you, you know, uh, have a glass of water from your tap, for example, mm -hmm. imagine the huge infrastructure That's in order to provide yes. yeah, that water and then make it available to you. Right. Then you transport, you go to your work, you go to, you know, your office or, you know, meet your family. Then whole infrastructure of transport, it has to be uh, organized, regulated, and it should operate seamlessly. And then you get connected to the internet. There's a huge information system behind it. Mm -hmm. We are also social creatures. We connect with our family and friends and the colleagues and so on. So anything, actually, any field, from education to health, finance to transport, space to uh, biotechnology, right. and so on. So it can be relevant to our lives and to our future. Right. Because our life is a combination of all these different systems. Right. And whenever we start an activity, that means we change. Our aim is actually to change and then to make our lives better. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, uh, I welcome any kind of research activity mm -hmm. as long as it is well justified right. in terms of its relevance to the future and actions we need to take from today. Right. So these are the key points and key criteria. There you go. That is yeah. the the very, very clear steps. And in fact, I think what Professor Roskatan is saying is pretty much anything under the sun, <laughs> but as long sure. as there is relevance to what's going to happen in the future. So that's, that, that, that action brings a, a lot of flexibility for future research, yeah? Yes. In the end, we are humans. Yes. And, um, and we are, of course, trying to create um, a sustainable uh, ecosystem, sustainable planet for ourselves. Um, so a sustainability not only in terms of uh, environmental term, but also socially sustainable, economically sustainable, right. and we would like to improve our lives. And um, my research, actually, during my research work, PhD research, mm -hmm. I had a lot of conversations with my supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Lowrich, so I send my uh, greetings to him <laughs> from here. <laughs> and so he always said that the humanity should try to protect you know, themselves first, right. not the planet. Because, oh, interesting. <laughs> because the planet has been there for a long time, right. for several billion years. And the history of humanity is very short. Yes. Uh, within this long kind of a lifespan. Right. And the planet can be without us. So if we are thinking about the future, we should think about our future. Well, humans. Future yes, is human. because the uh, nature, the ecosystem will be there. It may sustain itself. It will reform, you know, regenerate with or without us. So what is more important is that we continue, we keep our existence right. on this planet, maybe outside the planet oh, also. Could be, yeah. By understanding, of course, the nature, physics, chemistry, and biology of that, so that we can create some good environments, right. clean cities, uh, clean air, water, and then making all these resources accessible to all in the world. So this should be our uh, ultimate aims. Okay, right. So that, that's uh, unfortunately all the time we have for this today. In fact, there were so many things that I wanted to talk to you about, but um, apparently we, we might not have enough time for it. Uh, again, from Collecting Asia, we would like to thank you for being here with us. And it's always a pleasure to have you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Oskan Saritas, uh, thank you for joining us. And you. we look forward to having you with us for a lot more conferences. And of course, to the foresight. So thank you. Thank you. And it's a pleasure. We, that's it for this session. And we hope to see you again in the next one.